Drip World. This is Napalm Jed Johnson, and this is episode number 70 of This Week in Grip. And I'm joined, as always, by Alan Hynek. Alan, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing real good. How's everything going for you? It's going great, dude, especially now that the Juju Mufu videos are out. It seems like everybody liked them quite a bit, so we're going to talk about that episode. If you haven't listened to our review episode of the Juju Mufu visit, then go to episode 69 and watch that. Uh, please take a moment and give us a thumbs up. Hit that like button. That is helping out big time, and you guys are doing a great job of that. We had 85 likes on episode 69. I think that is probably a high number, uh, all-time high number, if not very, very close, and that's even including some of the ones that have been around for over a year. Speaking of all of the This Week in Grip episodes that have been around for over, you know, almost two years now we've been doing this, Alan. Um, Today I, well, I actually created a playlist way back around episode 13, and I have never updated it again. But uh, after watching some stuff about, uh, you know, creating a better YouTube experience for viewers, I thought, well, one of the things they suggested was keeping an updated playlist of related series of videos. So I went back and did that today, and I put all of the This Week in Grip videos into the playlist. Now, the way that you rearrange them is really not that fun. So you go through and you add, like, you know, 50 videos, and the next thing you know, you have 50 that are all in reverse order. So it's kind of a pain in the ass to be able to drag, like, number 16 all the way up to the top. You can't just do it. You have to, like, keep dropping it and then pick it back up and drop it again and all that stuff. So it's going to take me a little while, but very soon that playlist is going to be updated, and then I will put that into the description box of all the This Week in Grip videos that come out going forward and then I hope to be able to go back and put them into the description box of the episodes in the past. So working hard for you guys. I want to make it as great of an experience as possible. And I know that there's a lot of people that have come to the channel over the last couple of weeks, um, especially over the last few days, thanks to Juju Mufu and Tom Boyden putting up the, the videos. So uh, welcome aboard, everybody. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe so that you get uh, a notification for all the upcoming episodes of This Week in Grip. Uh, So what we're going to do right now is just do a quick follow-up, because when we recorded the show last week, Alan had not yet seen the Juju Mufu videos. They had not actually been publicized. I was just giving my reflections on the experience. So we're going to go over that with Alan, and then also we're going to do something that we haven't done yet, but we've been talking about doing it for a better part of a year, And what we're going to do every so often is we're going to do like an introspective on certain grip challenge items and tools that are out there. And we're going to start things off with the inch dumbbell. We're really going to explore what the inch dumbbell is, where it came from, its history, and, you know, what things are going on with it now, uh, current day. So that's what we're looking at in episode 70. So please be sure to hit the like button. Actually, we put a lot of work into this episode. All right, Alan, <clears throat> before we get into the inch dumbbell, let us let me just ask you, dude, what did you think of the two Juju Mufu videos that came out where they came and visited us here at Peak Strength and Fitness? Those were awesome. I personally, I got a ton out of, out of, watching, out of watching the training and, and your tutorials to those guys about, about the technique of everything. Mm-hmm. You know, as, as a lot of people on the channel know, I've been a member of, well, I'm a, I'm a lifetime member of the, of the Grip Authority website. Mm-hmm. And that's where you do, in case people don't know, that's where you offer you have various, various services, a lot of instructionals, uh, informationals, training technique, ideas, different ways of going about things. Specific to grip training, there's even strength training stuff on there. Mm-hmm. This particular one with, with Juji Mufu and, and Tom was different in that there were multiple camera angles. So you could actually really get to see a lot of different positioning and something that we've kind of missed in some of the other stuff. And I picked up a couple of real gems, especially with regards to the inch dumbbell. Mm. And one of the things you talked with specifically the, with the thumb placement, I never got to see it from that exact angle. 
And the way you showed that and the way it landed on the, on the screen like that, it just kind of, just a whole bunch of pieces suddenly fell together. Mm. And um, un- unfortunately for me, my, my, I'm, my training cycle just came to an end, so I'm in a, a, a deload right now. So I'm chomping at the bit to, to try some of this stuff. The, the inch is out of my reach right now, but the baby inch is kind of on the verge. So I really want to try that thumb placement thing that you showed. I yeah, um I, I never saw it that way the way you placed it and I tell you I um I came downstairs in my basement after watching that and I just gripped up I didn't want to take a pull but I just wanted to grip up and you could feel the difference with Absolutely. the way you do that with your thumb it was it was huge and yeah. and you said it in 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 everything it was in your other videos but just seeing it from that different camera angle was just a huge thing That's so that was cool. really awesome yeah, yeah I got a ton out of that. That I, you know what, you make a good point because you know all the stuff on the Grip Authority is basically one camera, and I don't modify the angles too much because most of it is just like talking head type format, and I do my best to move the cam or you know, you know on the gripper to like move the gripper around so you can see what I'm talking about. But it is a lot easier if you have someone that is actually holding the camera that can make adjustments. It was actually only one camera the whole time, but we ended up like you know through the through the process of, you know, repeating things because they might not have caught it on the first one, I'd end up saying the same thing um, in a different way or they, we'd go back over it and then we'd get another angle. So we, the edits really made it look awesome. So I, I totally agree. If people, if people were impacted by the tutorial that I did with those guys, they really need to join the Grip Authority. Like, I've said it for years, but... Um, I do that kind of stuff all the time on the Grip Authority, like breakdown techniques for um, grippers, bending, um, different feats, things like that. And there's stuff that I see people doing all the time when they put up videos that is really holding themselves back um, from from getting those feats. So um, the one thing that you said about the inch dumbbell, that's that's great, dude. I know that you've been training hard on challenge bells for like – over two years at least. So I hope it has a, a big impact for you when you get back to um, full-on training phase after King Kong. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, I'm really looking forward to playing with that. So, yeah, yeah. But all of that, um, all of the instructionals that you did, um, the, the, way, the way you came across in that video was exactly how you've come across in all of your, your personal instruction. You've shot videos um, for me for block weightlifting and other things, and you do other, all, those, all those coaching points things for, for various members, for your coaching clients, for the guys on TGA, yeah. and your right. presentation was the same. Like what we saw on that video, even though it was going to go out to a much wider audience, it was the same. You know, your, your level of professional, it, you just very consistent, you know, well, the same from one spot to the other. So, so yeah, there was um, very genuine. So I, I really, those were great videos. That needs to be in the people's... Uh, permanent permanent saved list because there are some real gems in there you might have to watch it a couple times because a lot of stuff happened fast but uh, it was good especially with the grippers too Um, there was so much stuff that and you've explained it but it gets lost it's like it's almost like you forget it and huge refreshers with just with the with the with the wrist angle and making sure to push the push the thumb forward and everything it was like damn i've been I knew that was there. It's like you know it's there, but you just kind of you just forget all about it, and you, you're almost focused on other things. It's like it's like technique gets flushed down the toilet once you go to make the clothes, and you got to think about that stuff. And uh, it was a good refresher to see. So, yeah. you know, other people, the the newer people that are probably subscribed since, and they might not have an appreciation for that. But it's you really need to pay good attention to that. Like I said, that should people need to be reviewing this several times. There's some really good tidbits in there. I wish. I wish you could have got more involved, even spent more time with Juju on like the phone books and stuff, because yep. that dude would destroy the fattest book ever. <laughs> he just needs oh, yeah. a little bit of extra instruction. Yeah, yeah. Well, in, but great stuff. Yeah, buddy. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, regarding the professionalism and stuff like that, like, uh, you know, thankfully, I. I guess that's one of the good things I got out of working at my job for so many years is I had to do a lot of presentations, PowerPoints, orientations, uh, train people on how to use heavy equipment and things like that. So that was a that was a big big payoff for me, and 
I get a rush out of it, man. I like doing those kinds of talks and uh, you know seminars and things. So it's it's a lot of fun. So hopefully mm-hmm. there's more opportunities to do that. And uh, I'm actually actually working on planning something at the gym for November. Uh, put together putting together a grip seminar. So uh, so look forward to seeing something like that, and maybe some people listening can come in for for that workshop one day workshop don't know when it's going to be exactly but we're we're working on it that would be so huge you know you you've put some of those things on in the past um at at your place and that's something where i've always wanted to get down that way for and the timing's never worked out you know i mean chris chris riders had some on uh, more gauge towards feet and things like that and um i really wanted to kind of make my rounds to some of these but yours are yours are a lot more applicable to the things that I'm working on. I mean, yeah. if if I was in the same room with you, like that would make that would make my my full time blob lifting journey that much easier. You know, it's it's such a night and day difference. I mean, you saw just circling back to the inch dumbbell for a second. You saw Juji Mufu use his typical technique. You can get a hop, and then all of a sudden he did it your way. Bang, locked the thing out. Right. You know, yeah. that's the type of crap that I'm talking about. I mean, you shot me videos like that before with block weights. It's just just a tremendous difference. It's and it's nothing more frustrating than sitting on the strength, but not being able to use it because you just don't know how. Oh yeah, so that is just yeah. a, such a critical aspect of it. And that's that's like the biggest thing right there, sitting on the strength and not knowing how to apply it. Because I I know that there's people out there that are just their hands are strong, but they're doing things that is making it harder for them to complete the feat. I see it. Yeah. I see it all the time. And, it's uh, maddening. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the poor guys like, out there go, oh, go ahead. No, no, just, I mean, I, go ahead. I was, I was thinking, you know, like people out there that you know they could hub a 45-pound plate with, with right. 15 pounds added, and they just don't know how to position their fingers, and they're struggling with it, or they don't know how to chalk their hands right, or it doesn't right. dawn on them that their thumb position changes a little bit. So even though they've chalked up, once they go to grab something, all of a sudden it's bare skin on metal. And they've just lost. It's just that those things, you just don't even think of them. And you just sit there in frustration and, and kicking your feet on the ground. And, yeah, just you need somebody to, to give you that little bit of extra guidance, that know-how. That holds true with so many things. But this right. is just a perfect example of it. You could see the huge difference is you look at any of Juji Mufu's videos from the past and, and look at what he did in just a brief amount of time. That's huge. You go from never shutting a three to shutting a three. Holy crap! Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a game changer for a lot of people, right. you know. And uh, yeah, major stuff. And he and and like, there's something to be said about being able to work with someone in person. So, I I gave a silver bullet DVD to Juju Mufu in Philadelphia. I don't know if he ever looked at it. I I have no idea. But there's you know all the information that I shared with him. I'm pretty sure everything that I showed those guys is in that silver bullet dvd but watching it on a tv screen versus being right next to the dude that can show you and actually move the gripper for you and make the adjustments and stuff like that it's night and day there's no there's no uh no comparison there it's it's such a bigger impact being able to work directly with somebody so and i i wasn't lying like literally there there there's a guy out in uh out in washington in 2014 when I went out there where I he could not close a number one and by the time I was done working with him in just five or ten minutes he had smashed a 2.5 so that it just goes to show there's people sitting around there with strength that they're not able to use and the point that I was there was a there's a point in the video where I'm, I said if you hold the gripper like this you're not going to close a three I don't care how strong you are uh, there was a video that came out probably last night by uh, John Connor, who I think is the guy that visited the gym and was like, he's in the one about can you crush a human skull or something like that on the. Oh gym. yes, yes, you know? I do remember that one. Yeah, so um, he said he he replayed that part of the video where I said I don't care how strong you are, if you hold it like this, you're not going to do it. And then he proceeded to do a no set with a number three and closed it. Well, that's not what I said. I didn't say you can't close a three without setting it. I said if I what I was trying to show there is if you have the gripper too far back in your hand, like basically contacting the bone in your thumb, you're not going to close that three. That's not what he did. He actually 
you know, fired his thumb pad forward and created a solid foundation and was able to no set it. So still, I mean, <clears throat> the t the technique and placement is so big with grippers, and it, it's it's for me it's honestly heartbreaking when I see see people using bad technique because I want people to be successful. I don't want them to struggle for years and years. I want them to hit PRs and things like that. So it's it's tough for me to see that, and uh, you know to to get them to you know the way to contact them and and uh, make that make that change it's it's just tough to with so many people doing it wrong so right um, right and i think i think juji would have totally murdered the phone book but he was so destroyed i mean oh those we guys, talked about that yeah he was so destroyed like they were they were in either philadelphia or new york that morning and did a video for like or did an appearance or something for like six hours and then they drove for three and a half or four hours to get to my place they got there at seven fifteen. So now they've been up for eight to ten hours. They've been doing uh, traveling multiple days in a row. And we really packed everything into about three, three and a half hours. So it was, and he's probably already, he probably already had a gigantic um, endorphin dump from lifting the inch and closing the three. So well, yeah. to, to be able to put everything back together in order to uh, rip a phone book in that short a span of time, um, you know, it was it, it, after everything else that he had done that day and the, the few days before that, he was just totally wiped out. And I even say that in the video, you guys are totally burnt or wiped or something like that. And yeah. um, he was close, man. If he would have, if he would have just pulled on it when I when I basically said go, I don't know what I said. I might have said like right there. If he would have pulled on it, he would have broken the book. But instead, he got the line of compromise. I said, yeah, it's right there. And then he would, like, relax and pull, and when he relaxed, he would spoil the book. <laughs> yeah. It's, no, he, he had two left hands at that point. He just yeah. – his coordination was gone. Yeah. He, right. he, he wouldn't have been doing a whole lot, barely opening a door at that point, really. You know, it was just – you could see it. Yeah. But, Christ, you know, he's – the guy's – he's. I'm assuming he's still, still doing, that, like, that train 365 days thing that he was doing. Where he's hitting Very, it every day. Dude, I don't even know. I saw another. something about that in a video, and I was not aware that he was doing that. So I, I don't. That did not come up. It's, it's funny. We had no time to just sit and talk. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. But he's. I mean, he's just just spent. That's just how he looked to me. Sure. You know. Yeah. Needs to needs to eat a ton of food and, and crash for just a, a day and a half. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, they so, polished yeah. off all the chili, man. There was nothing but like. Uh, remnant sauce in the crock pot when those guys were done and headed out so they did get some food in them and uh i guess they thought it was pretty good chili i thought it was good it was tasty for me man i had about six <laughs> so yeah your daughter paid the price <laughs> yeah yep that's right we talked about that <laughs> and she's done nothing but talk about chili ever since so yeah <laughs> <laughs> well cool so if uh Yo, uh, it was such a great experience, man. If anybody has any questions about it, I mean, just leave a comment in the in the comment section of this video, and we can go over that. Uh, was there anything else that you wanted to bring up about those two uh, videos, Alan? I, I wanted to mention one thing. You were talking about that John Connor making that reference to, um, you know, after your statement, he went and closed that gripper. Yeah. And, you know, if you envision your, your, your hand having it flat in front of you and just, just closing the, the very tips of your fingers and feeling how strong that is and then trying to bring the tips of your fingers to your thumb pad and feeling how really weak that, that is. Mm -hmm. That's what, in my mind, more or less your statement was, is yeah. that you've got all your horsepower up front, but you don't have it at the tail end. That's why you need to have the back handle of that grip or the dog leg up as far as you can mm -hmm. for, for getting the proper leverage. You know, otherwise it's just, you're just disadvantaged, you know. It's uh, just a completely different, completely different thing, you know. So I guess that's how I I viewed it anyway. Oh, so. absolutely, no doubt about it. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, I don't know. It, you get people commenting online and stuff like that and saying stuff. And I saw that this morning, and you know, I initially kind of reacted like, well, that's not. I wasn't saying you, no one will close it with a no set. That's not at all what I was saying. I mean, we didn't have time to cover no sets and um, table no set and credit card set. I mean, we touched on it, but.
but we didn't go into much detail. So those are completely different techniques that, that you mm-hmm. need to master. So, right. yeah, Alan, so, yeah, and uh, I appreciate all the praise about TGA. I've definitely worked hard on that over the years, so hopefully people will jump on there and take advantage of it. Um, let's go ahead and cover inch dumbbell, Alan. Uh, all right. We've both, we've both done some pre-work on this, and basically what I – the reason I want to do this is the there's a, there's a lot of information out there about the inch dumbbell. Obviously, you can find it. Um, I've got a DVD on how to train to lift the inch dumbbell myself. I don't know of any other resources like that out there. But uh, even you know even as recently as one of the Brian Shaw videos, he actually put out some information that I'm not sure if he's. Uh, unaware or if he said something wrong or if you take it a different way there you can kind of listen to what he said at one point and it sounds like he says there's only like 10 to 15 people that can lift the inch dumbbell in the world and that's that's not the case so and i've been asked that since that video came out so i just wanted to try to put out as much information as possible about the inch dumbbell in the time we have remaining for this uh video um and uh Alan, why don't you start off with some of the basics about the inch dumbbell and, uh, you know, size dimensions, things along those lines. Okay. All right. Well, luckily, um, this is something I had never got to do, but I happen to have David Horn's Gripopedia, his encyclopedia of grip right in front of me, and I am looking at the inch dumbbells original section of the book. Mm-hmm. And uh, there are some uh, specific dimensions in here, and he gives credit um, of these dimensions to uh, to Joe Roark. And these were noted from uh, May 27th of 2001. Um, but the inch dumbbell, it's a bell weighing uh, 172 pounds, uh, 20 inches in overall length, uh, approximate diameter of each sphere being 8.5 inches, uh, circumference of, a sp- of one of the spheres, that, that would be the end of the bell, being 27 inches, uh, diameter of the handle, they're showing here as 2.38 inches, which we call it just two and three eighths. Uh, uh, the circumference of the handle is seven and a half inches. Length of handle bes- between the spears is four inches. And um, well, the original inch dumbbell, um, this article is shown as having had a, a hole in the center of it. Yeah, which, that's the key <laughs> point right there, Alan. Yes, yes. yes what does it yes. say about that hole? Um, it it has it had a hole of, of it, apparently it's an unknown size, but it was in the center of it. That's about as specific as he gets with it. Um, but we know now that that was used as some form of a of a crutch, basically, to allow the the inch bell to be to be lifted by its creator, uh, Thomas Inch. Mm-hmm. So. Um, the this, the description of this goes on to talk about the paint color. the The dumbbell was silver colored in well, hold the 1970s. On, hold on, let, before okay. we get too far, let's talk about that hole because here's the thing. Okay. I get I get remarks on my YouTube, my website, my Instagram all the time about, oh, you, all you need to do is go buy these uh, references from Thomas Inch and all these old time strongmen because they're the ones that originally started doing all this and they're the ones that really know the deal and all that stuff. And um, here's the thing. That right there, in my opinion, shoots a big hole in the credibility for Thomas Inch right away. The fact that there's a hole in the dumbbell. And uh, I'm quite certain I read an article by Nathan Hawley, H-O-L-L-E, however you pronounce that, there, where he said that uh, the speculation was that Thomas Inch would wear some kind of a spike, a nail, or steel bar on his wrist. And when he would lift the inch dumbbell, he, he would do so because he was able to insert that spike into that hole of the dumbbell and stop the rotation. And if that's the case, any probably anybody lifting or anyone listening to this show right now would be able to lift the inch dumbbell if they could hook uh, something in there to stop that rotation. So that is why when people talk, oh, about all these old-time greats, that's that's one of the things that where I say, where's the video? <laughs> I mean, there's not going to be a video, but 
Um, I just I just think that I, I just have to wonder how many of these guys were just shysters back in the day, and uh, they probably never thought that anyone would ever lift the inch dumbbell legitimately. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, it's just it, it's very disappointing for me. But I mean, if that's the case. I mean, I don't care about anything basically that Thomas Inch says. Uh, to the along those lines, there's a there's a British Path video out there on YouTube that you can find where um, it literally looks like a WWE performance going on because Thomas Inch has this video that or has this dumbbell that's not even close to what we know now as the, the Thomas Inch dumbbell. It's some other kind of dumbbell. You know, they hit it with a metal stick or something to make sure to, to show that it's made out of metal. And then these people come over and, like, give a half ass attempt trying to lift it. And then Inch goes over and picks it up like it's like it's 25 pounds. So, yes. you know, I don't, I just don't buy into anything about Thomas Inch anymore. I just, I just don't. So, um, and there's other things that have come up with other old time strongmen and things like that. Uh, performers where I'm like, man, I just, if I, I just don't, I just don't listen to that stuff anymore. To be honest with you. Right, right. Nope, I agree. I was, I was actually just trying to find. I was trying to scroll through or uh, page through this book. Um, I, I might, I, I hate to misquote somebody, but I thought, I thought David Horn in this book even mentioned that he himself didn't believe that the Thomas Inch. Can you, uh, Alan, can you say that again? It sounds like you're. Your uh, face. Oh, is I cutting out? Maybe I was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was trying to trying to turn the pages in the book and hold the whole the phone on my shoulder at the same time. Um, yeah. I think David Horn. I was just trying to find it in here, but I couldn't. I couldn't locate it. But I thought he made mention that he himself doesn't think that Thomas Inch ever actually lifted the bell. Right. Not legitimately. At least not 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 without, not, without, not, without, not, not legitimately. Without. Yes. Yes. I think he speculated that that of the inch because it sounded like there was. Um, as many as five different sizes of the inch dumbbell. Yeah, so in and my research, I, I saw there was at least a 75, a 140, a 153, and then the 172. And then if you consider yes. the one that's in the British Path video, then there's a fifth one right there that who knows what the heck that thing is. Right, right. And it looked like the speculation was the one that Thomas Inch was generally speaking lifting was the 75-pounder. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I guess that kind of speaks <laughs> speaks volume. in volumes. But, um, you know, these days, there, you know, the, the original dumbbell that's considered the Thomas Inch dumbbell is still in existence. It was owned for the longest time by David Prowse, who is the actor who played um, Darth Vader in the Star Wars movies. And he eventually, or that bell eventually made its way to Kim Wood who was, uh, for the longest time, the strength coach of the Cincinnati Bengals, is still alive to this day in Ohio, as far as I know. And um, he has the inch dumbbell in his possession. Um, And then these days, you can get inch dumbbells from various sources, including my website. And um, all of them are uh, cast iron implements that are all one piece. So what's important about that, everybody, if you haven't touched an inch dumbbell before, because it's all cast iron one piece, when you try to pick it up, the globes start to spin towards the opening in your hand. And when that happens, the rolling will open your hand up and it'll rip out of your hand. So a lot of times people say that the the inch dumbbell rotates. By definition, it doesn't really rotate, but what happens is, the, the globe heads start to turn, they start to roll, and that rolling action is what rips it out of your, out of your grip. So that is why it's so hard. If it, was, if, you know, if it was just 172 pounds, a lot of people would be able to lift it. If it was a thick, a thick handle and uh, it, 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 uh, you know, the handle rotated or something, probably you know, not as many people would lift it, but it would be easier to lift than the inch dumbbell. But the the major challenge with this thing is the fact that it's all one piece, and it doesn't have a hole in it. Yours are the the straight up article. So right. That's what we see produced nowadays. Yep. Yeah. Sure. We might I mean we might as well uh, use a lifting strap to pick it up because then numbers of uh, people that lifted it will will skyrocket. And along those lines, I made mention to where Brian Shaw says something about like ten to fifteen people uh, lifting it. That is not accurate. I, I'm on the grip board right now in the section that's called um, 
community records and stats. This is a complete list of grip board members who have been recorded as meeting the requirements of what we look for in a video. And uh, without actually counting up, I mean, there's well over 20, maybe even, maybe even more. I mean, this list stretches from Wade Gilliam, Richard Soren, Jim Wiley, which were uh, Steve Gardner, Nathan Holly, David Horn. All these names were added way back in like 2003, if not, if not, you know, before that when I first got on the grip board. And then they continue all the way to uh, Yuha Haru, Kupinski, Igor, J Tommy Jennings, and John Wojciechowski um, that have been added in the last few years. So that is by no means an exhaustive list because there's a lot of people that have lifted the inch dumbbell that aren't on the grip board. So, I mean, it's dozens of people that have lifted it. Now, if you want to consider the number of people who have lifted two at the same time, yeah, now the 10 to 15 number is much more accurate because actually the people that are listed for doing the, the double inch farmer's walk are Jeff Bissonette, Joel Sward, Andrew Derniat, uh, Adam Glass, Yuha Haru, I don't know why I'm not on there. I guess I never submitted a video or my name might have gotten cut off. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, that. and plus there's other combination feats that have been done, such as an inch in one hand and three 15-kilo discs in the other, or inch dumbbell in one hand or a 50-pound blob, inch dumbbell and a 50-pound curl, inch dumbbell and a 25-20 plate pinch. You know, there's tons of different combination feats that have been done. Uh, you know, as uh, that are that are all maintained in a list on the grip board. So that's that's one of the really cool things about the grip board is it captures a lot of that stuff by the grip board members. Um, you think of any other? What other inch dumbbell lifts are there, Alan? Besides some of the ones that I just mentioned there. Um, just the ones with weight added. Um, we've seen the ones where um, there's some mentions in this book about people that have cleaned the inch. Um, yeah, yeah, of course, yep. Let's see what else. Um, I guess those are kind of the main ones. Otherwise, we see people demonstrating just sheer control over the inch bell by placing things on the globes to demonstrate that they're not even getting the slightest rotation, just showing yeah. just a, a true domination of the weights. Typically, we see that done with cans or, or cups or something like that. Um, right. And then, like you said, combination feeds, uh, double-inch lifts or or lifts, you know, inch lift with a plate or, a, you know, a plate pinching, blob lifting, things like that. So, yeah, the, the number of feats are just endless, practically. Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. In fact, one, I just got a comment on one of my videos today. There ain't no way I'll find it. Uh, it was something like, how do the, how do the old-time strongmen of yesterday compared with those of today? And like I didn't, Ooh. I didn't answer. But I'm almost like, in a way, they're like we've surpassed a lot of the things that have taken place in the past regarding at least the inch dumbbell. Um, now, if you consider like like some of the numbers that you know, Gurner with his like 800 pound one arm deadlift or something like that, and then uh, Louis Sear 500 pound dumbbell. I, I don't even know the exact numbers, but like. I can't even get my mind around some of those things, and that brings question into my mind about whether or not those were legitimate back in the day. Because, right. like, you know, a guy like Joe Roark can find resources where, like, one dude says this happened, and then another dude says that something slightly different happened, and then another dude says it was 500 pounds, another dude says it was 550. So there isn't even consistent reporting going on of the numbers well, from people that were standing right there and watching things go on. So yeah, it just makes like, it really, really hard. Yeah, that's that's the fishing story, you know, where you caught a seven pound bass, but every time you tell it, it gets two pounds heavier. Yeah, it's yeah, that's exactly what it is. So that that's why that's why documentation is so important. The 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 pics and nowadays videos, or it didn't happen. You know, we kind of have that. Well, it's a it's it's almost literally a, a written rule. I think I think there is something about that on the grip board even. But if you don't have a video, basically don't even post it. You know, otherwise it's going to get taken down. You know, a lot of guys even take a take offense to those sort of things too. You know, if yeah. I tell people I lifted the inch, and I don't have a video to go along with it, well, then that's that's literally taking a stab at you, for example, because you have done it, you have put the work in, you know, and I'm just making it up. <laughs> yeah, so. and the history of that is.
people would make a claim back in the day on the grip board, and this was before everybody had, there was no YouTube, and not everybody had a video camera because phones didn't record video back then. You were lucky if they would take a picture. So you had to have a camera that would either take a picture or have a video camera, and a lot of people did not have those. I remember, I remember in college begging my parents for a video camera. It was when, um, it was when Jackass came out, and uh, my friend, my friend Kyle actually got a video camera, and they would go and do that stuff. They would push each other down hills in a shopping cart and light each other on fire and stuff like that. And I thought that was so awesome. And at this time, I was doing a lot of serious training in the gym already, and I wanted to capture that stuff on film. So that was one of the first things that I asked for. Um, like my senior year, it was like the biggest thing I asked for that year was a video camera. So, um, you know, that's kind of the history. And, and people would make a claim that they could do something, and then once they would show up at a contest or a, a, a get-together, they wouldn't be able to do it. And then it would resolve yeah. in a bunch of bickering. So a lot of the rules that are on there are have to do with like stopping the damn bickering that would take place on the grip board back in the day. Cause it used to get, it used to get really bad. So, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess that, that sheds some light on it, but even in the absence of that though, I, I think there needs to be, there needs to be some proof, you know, otherwise we could just, you know, everybody could just be saying it, you yeah, know, just say whatever and, you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Freedom yeah. Of speech, and, bro. And to be, be, how awesome would it be one day, you know, when you're, when you're sitting there in your twilight years to look back at some of those videos and mm-hmm. say, yeah, I did it and kind of, you know, it's just, that's just awesome in itself, you know, yeah. so you definitely want to be keeping track of that stuff. Right. Oh. You know, you know, what's funny yeah. along those lines, dude, um, we went to a, a wedding. My cousin got married this, this, uh, weekend on Friday night and, uh, my wife and I went and had a burger at this, uh, hotel or not a hotel at this restaurant that was right by our hotel. And it had this, like, ESPN story or something about the Mannings, the, the two brothers that are, like, NFL quarterbacks. Oh, yeah. Uh, Peyton and Eli. And, like, yep. you know, they had footage of everything, dude. Like, it was down to award, sure, award ceremonies in high school games and stuff like that. But they had, like, footage of, like, in the kitchen having dinner and uh, it was like, I've never seen a video that had such obscure footage, like losing the first tooth, um, this monster dump they took when they were 12 years old. It was like everything that they ever did, they had on film. I could not believe it. I just kept remarking, like, how do you have this stuff on film? It's crazy. So I don't know. They kind of, I thought that was related, but maybe not. Have you seen that special? No, I haven't. No, that's interesting. I actually like uh I really like Peyton Manning, actually. Mm-hmm. So I should try to look that up. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, yeah, look that's it up. I, and I wouldn't have watched it. It was just on the screen where we were. But um, I don't know. I don't watch much about football. But it, it did look like it was pretty cool. There was no audio, so we couldn't hear it. So who knows what they were saying. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, let me ask you this, Alan. I was trying to remember how many people have actually cleaned the inch. Whether or not they've put it overhead or not, I wasn't too worried about it. But um, I could think of Mark Henry, Lane Snook, and Ryan Green. That's all I could think of. Do you know of anybody else that have actually legitimately cleaned it? And I, I, I have an asterisk by Rich Williams only because inadvertently it actually touched his thigh on the way up. So... Um, uh, I remember Richard Soren saying, by definition, it wouldn't count. It would be qualified as a continental. Um, do you remember any other ones besides Henry Snook and uh, Green that have done the... Did Mike Burke not clean the, clean the inch? See, I don't remember him actually doing a one-arm clean and actually catch it. I remember him okay. doing, like, a double clean attempt, and he came really close. It was, like, the most monstrous power curl that you've ever seen in your life, taken with two dumbbells from the floor. But I don't. He didn't like recover and stand there and show control or anything. It just, he just kind of dropped them. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking at it right now, and in um, in David Horn's article, it says Mike Burke nearly cleaned a pair of inch replicas to his shoulders. He just couldn't mm-hmm. fix them at the top, but right. it was an incredible effort. And then he also makes mention of, of Rich Williams. This was on June 25, 2011, 
and it says, Rich Williams cleaned and push-pressed the dumbbell to arm's length. Upon reviewing the video, Richard Soren stated it was found that a thigh brush occurred during the clean. Mm -hmm. So that does sound like that it had, it had taken something from that a little bit. Yeah. So otherwise, there's a – did you mention a guy that I have – in his book, he's showing it looks like there's Mark Henry, Lane Snook, Ryan Green. Did you mention that one? Yeah, I mentioned Ryan Green, and I, I remember that one distinctly because he was like a Canadian strongman that came out of nowhere, and not only did he clean the inch, but he pressed it. And I'm not talking about a push press. I'm talking about a strict press. There was a little lean involved, but there was absolutely no push whatsoever from his lower body. It was insane, absolutely insane. Okay. And otherwise, Bill Kazmaier has given some credit, but it sounded like he used his knee to, to kind of get the clean yeah. sort of kicked underway. So, so yeah, yeah it looks it. like that's um, pretty well covered what you had there. Yeah, it's, I couldn't yep. think of anybody else. So um, I guess that's an exhaustive list right now. And if anybody wants more information on Inch Dumbbell, Joe Roark actually has a really nice uh, article series called Inch 101 on <clears throat> on bodybuilding.com so that's where i grabbed some of my information this morning and uh I, I i think joe does a really good job with his documentation he runs ironhistory.com as well which is kind of a sister site to uh the grip board so <clears throat> yeah um well i have I one know, thing I'm i guess sure. to add about the the yeah, inch go ahead. here um you know, we always talk about training methods for it and things like that and different different metrics. A lot of people have different ideas of, of you know, uh, what a, what an equivalent lift would be, you know, X amount on a rolling thunder, mm -hmm. you know, which is iron mines, two and three-eighths inch handle, or, you know, a certain amount on a, uh, on a two and a half inch crusher, um, things like that, even one hand axle deadlifts and, or even a, a, wrench, a wrist wrench replica, for example, also we'll see people quoting numbers that go along with that. Yeah. And um, those are more or less guidelines because we see people pulling these numbers all the time and never actually lifting the inch dumbbell. These are seriously strong guys. They just, they just haven't quite got to the level of the inch. And that just goes to show that to lift the inch, you really need to have the inch dumbbell or have access to one to, to give you that training because there is, there is literally nothing like having that in your hand. Um, I've not lifted the inch, but I've done things with like side saddles with it, deloads, things like that. You got to have it. It's, it's just that simple. You know, there's just nothing that replicates the feel of that, of the bell. They, things exactly. can come close, but if you don't have it, you're just, just a completely different thing. So. Right, and it really helps to know how to put your thumb on there. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. That, oh, man, I, I tell you, I'm looking at my bell right now, and there's not even chalk on that part of it where that should be. Right. <laughs> so, right. That's a little embarrassing. You know, I'm kind of pissed at myself right now. I wish I, <laughs> you know, and, and in, our, in our private conversations, you've probably told me this before. You know, it's just the way some things come across on the phone, and like I said, different right. angles. You just don't know. You need that yeah. tutorial. You know, it's like you yeah. need somebody to tell you how to tie a fishing knot for the first time. This is no different, sure. you know. <laughs> yep. so, um, oh, I can't wait, though. It'll be uh, probably probably Wednesday. I might I might cut my – it'll sort of be an official week from my uh, from the start of my grip deload. I was going to push it so it more or less correlated with my body, but your your, your, your Juju Moo Food collab kind of screwed that up for me. <laughs> so. <laughs> um. Yeah, you brought up a good point, like the comparisons between the implements and stuff, and everybody's different. For instance, I just did a video on this, and I made mention of like uh, 200 to 205 might be a, a good number on the new style Rolling Thunder. But even back in the day, I was able to lift the inch, and I, I could only do 180 pounds on the old Rolling Thunder, which is easier than the current model. So it's it's there's really no you can't assign a number to it because it just doesn't work that way there's guidelines no, it's, it's, there's there's areas you want to try to be in this area but obviously the stronger you get the better and there's still no guarantee because you know a person on a wrist wrench might be able to do 120 pounds because their wrist is so stinking strong but even if you have a super strong wrist and you have tiny hands, 
you're, you're, you still may not be a match for the action of the bell. So it goes back to what you said where, you know, having the experience on the dumbbell is, is going to make, make a big difference. Yeah, it's not apples to apples at all. It's it's really not, you know, and, and we see the same thing. Even even using different implements, you'll have guys, you know, shutting, you know, credit cards setting, you know, a, a, a 3.5 that aren't lifting the inch, you know, and, and pulling things like the blob and, and, and then vice versa, it goes the other way. So there's just there's just no guarantee. It's such that, that specificity that we're always talking about. You just, it, you got to have the very thing that you want to be messing with. Yeah. So it's what sure. makes you stand the best chance. Yep. Yeah, buddy. Well, cool, man. Dude, I think we kind of covered that, but if there's any other questions that people have about the inch dumbbell, then uh, leave, the, leave them in the comments section below right after you hit the like button. Um, if anybody wants that inch dumbbell DVD, I'll put it in the description box along with the link to the This Week in Grip play, uh, playlist as well. But um, unless there's anything else to cover, Alan, why don't you take the show away, brother? All right. Well, that is episode 70 of This Week in Grip, uh, Juji Mufu uh, video uh, uh, rehash. I uh, hope everybody liked it. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below. And uh, we'll be back next time with episode 71. We'll see you then.